In this presentation, we will create a purchase order and create a new inventory item as we create the purchase order within QuickBooks Pro 2019. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Here we are in the home page. We currently have the open windows open. To open the open windows, go to the view tab and go to the open windows list. What we're going to do now is enter a purchase order. And remember what the purchase order is. The purchase order is going to be something that we're going to use to request uh, inventory from a vendor. It's going to be different than if we were to request something on our own. Say if we were going to purchase something from say Amazon even if it's for our business and we were to be reselling it, we typically would make the payment at Amazon at the point of purchasing it, uh, at the point of requesting. Uh, and it's different here when we make the purchase order. If we are a fairly larger vendor and we have a, a relationship with a fairly larger company, merchandising company that is dealing with a vendor, then oftentimes we can actually send the purchase order, which is a request, and not have a payment at the point of sending the purchase order, meaning they then send us the inventory and we make the payment at this point in time when we get the inventory. So note when we make the purchase order then, there's no real journal entry behind it. And that's one thing I just want to reiterate because that's unusual with every other type of basically icon that you see on this home page. This is basically the only one that's going to have a form that we will create, which will look uh, similar to, to many other types of forms. It'll have numbers in it. But it won't have any actual journal entry, no effect on the financial statement, no effect on the income statement or, or the profit and loss or the balance sheet. And that's because we haven't received the inventory yet and we haven't paid for the inventory yet. And therefore, there's nothing to be recorded on our financial statements. But it is a request form that we want to use uh, in order to note that we made the request for the inventory. And we can then use it to help us populate things like the bill that we will create and the inventory that we will record once we, re we receive it and we can also use it to create things like the um, the invoice or the sales receipt that we make if we buy this uh, inventory for a particular customer which we are going to do at this time so as we create the purchase order uh, we could this is a request for inventory we we may have to set up say a new vendor as we create the purchase order and we can do that we're going to do that here and we may be setting up a purchase order for an inventory item that we've never used before. And rather than going to the lists up top and going to items, setting up that inventory item first and then creating the purchase order, it is possible for us to create the purchase order and, uh, and the new purchase item within the creation of the purchase order. So that's what we're going to do now. And you can imagine our process here. We sell guitars in our store. You can imagine someone coming into the store and saying, hey, you know, I'd, I would like this specific a guitar we would like a fender guitar uh, and um, we're going to say well we don't have this particular fender guitar here but we can see if we can order the fender guitar for you uh, and, and in so doing we're going to have a custom purchase order here we're going to have a purchase order for uh, a custom purchase for a particular type of guitar for a particular client so we will then uh, create that purchase order for a new vendor so let's set that up now we're going to go to the purchase order and we're going to say that the vendor is going to be Fender. Fender is our new vendor. So Fender is a guitar uh, producer. And we're going to say, okay, I don't see a Fender as a vendor. So we're going to add Fender. So I'm going to, we could have the add here. Note what we don't have to do is to go to the, to the vendors uh, up top and, and go to the vendor center here. We don't have to go to the vendor center and add the vendor before entering the purchase order. We can type it in, that's the way I would tend to do it. Fender, it's our new vendor. And we're gonna say tab, and it's gonna say we don't have that set up. We could have the quick setup or the full setup. Now if it's a vendor we do business with a lot, we probably want as much detail as possible to do the full setup. But to just create the purchase order, all we need is the name. So we're gonna do the quick setup for the example problem here. We're gonna say that's gonna be that, and we're gonna keep these the same. The date, uh, we're gonna have the date of. We're going to make it the 9th, February 9th. Now I'm on, on February 6th, 2019. I'm just going to hit the plus arrow, 1, 2, and that'll take it, or 3, <laughs> to the 9th. Uh, then we've got the purchase order number, which should populate automatically. I'm going to keep that. The, the vendor is vendor. We don't have the address because we didn't populate it. Depends if we need it as to whether we mail it, print and mail it, or whether we email it. 
and then we're going to have um, our address, and then we're going to have the item. Now, we don't have an item. If I select this drop-down, this is our inventory items that we're trying to request. We don't have it because it's a new uh, vendor, and we don't have any other inventory items set up. Again, what we don't have to do is go to the lists and items and set up a new inventory item here. We can set up the new inventory item as we go. I'm just going to set up the item name. We're just going to call it the short name. It's going to be an SQ to, uh, to uh, reference this item number. And then we're going to say tab. It's going to ask us, hey, we don't see that. Do you want to set up a new inventory item? And I know I'm paraphrasing some of these, uh, these pop-ups. I hope I'm getting them pretty pretty much correct so quickbooks did not find sq in your list of products and services would you like to add it now if not go back to the select an existing product or service so that pretty much says hey we don't see that sq in our items list would you like to add it now so i'm going to say yes we would like to add it now now it defaults to an inventory part because obviously it's a purchase order so you would think that it would be an inventory part which it, it is so these are the different types of items that we can typically have. So yep, what's an inventory part? Now here we're going to go through this. We're going to say it's uh, it's a uh, SQ. We're going to say it's a Squire. Squire. It's the type of guitar we have here. And then we want that same on the description. So it's going to populate for us. The cost that we're going to have is 168 Now again, we're not paying for it right now. This is just a request. But this cost will help us when we do make the payment when we do make the bill it'll populate for us the account will be cost of goods sold when we actually expense this item when we sell uh, the fender and it's going to be the preferred vendor is going to be <laughs> fender okay the vendor is fender and then we're going to say uh, that the sales price is going to be uh, 244 this is how much we're going to sell it for this is how much we're going to buy it for Tax, it is going to be taxable, meaning sales tax. We're going to have to charge sales tax on it. If you're in an area that has sales tax, then of course, uh, most of the merchandise items will be taxable. And this for this means uh, that it's for sales tax that we're going to be charging to our invoices. And then the income account is going to be merchandise sales. So it's one of our income accounts, merchandise sales. So we're going to say merchandise sales. And again, you might be thinking, well, maybe I want to break out the merchandise sales by vendor or something like that and make a make a vendor merchandising sales or a fender merchandising sales and you may want to do that but you typically don't as long as they're in the same kind of group of of the type like a guitar or something like that uh, then you probably don't want to make that much detail on the income statement by account because you can make revenue reports by a vendor by uh, so so you don't really need it uh, that much detail on the income statement so that's your decision to to decide how many income statement accounts how much detail do i want an in income statement account versus other types of reports that can give us more detail. So we're going to say OK, and that's what we're going to have so far. And so there it is, and it's going to populate for us. Now we're going to say that uh, we want one of these because it's a custom order. And, and once again, it's going to be a new customer. It was a music store stuff <laughs> who's adding this. So And we don't have that. Oh, here's music store stuff. We do have music store stuff. So we're going to keep uh, music store stuff as the customer. Actually, it's not music store stuff. It's we're going to add a new customer. It's going to be called new music stuff. So new music stuff. All right. So it's, we're going to add a new customer here. So we don't have this one here. So we're going to add in new music stuff. That's going to be our new customer that's buying this. We're going to buy this, <laughs> this guitar from Fender, our vendor, that we're purchasing it for music store, the new music store stuff. And then uh, once we get the guitar, of course, we will then create an invoice as we sell it to um, the, this customer. So this is the customer tab. Remember that the customer tab is not necessary in a purchase order because we might have a purchase order. Say if we're making something that's not as customized, we might be ordering a bunch of guitars that are all standardized that we just want in our warehouse that we plan to sell in the future. So I'm going to say, and so this one's going to be custom and that helps us to track through uh, the payment process and the creation of the uh, sales receipt or invoice. So we're going to say tab and we're going to say we could do the full setup, which if it was a customer, we would probably want more information. But for the purposes of this problem, we're just going to say the quick setup. All we really need is the name to enter this data and track it through for that particular customer. So and that's going to be it. We're going to say save and close. Now we're going to make one more purchase order. So once again, I'm going to do this again and make a different purchase order. I'm going to say purchase order. 
Now we could have said save and new to, to, to do that instead of closing it and going back in here, but uh, so we'll go back in here. So this one's gonna be one for Epiphone. So Epiphone is someone that we already have set up. So we're gonna contrast this to, a, to a kind of a normal purchase order from our normal vendor. And we could type it in there, Epiphone. And we're gonna say the date here is the 9th as well. I'm just tabbing through this. And then if the purchase, the number's the same. There's our vendor, here's our shipping address. And the item here is just gonna be the, our, our most normal type of guitar that we probably sell the most. And therefore we're just going to uh, you know stock our shelves with this one or stock our warehouse with it and that's going to be the elp so if i select this we could find it here in terms of the elp which is the epiphone les paul i'm just going to type it in elp and then tab and it'll populate the description here we're going to buy three of these this time so i'm going to buy three of these and this time we're not buying it for a particular customer just for the store so these are going to go into the store so we're not going to track the customer we didn't get a custom order in this case this is just going to be the types of guitars we're going to hold on to the types that we normally uh, get the most sales for and therefore the ones that we want to have on hand so then we're going to go save and close and there we have that now remember we're not going to go to the financial statements and check this now because there is no effect on the financial statements this is just a request when will there be an effect on the financial statements when we receive the guitars and we record the bill or when and or when we we receive them and we make a payment because that's the point in time that the inventory is going to go up so we can increase the inventory because they are in our possession and the time that we either recognize the liability we have accounts payable because we owe for them or we recognize the um the payment that we make when we write the check uh, for the inventory at that point in time so the goal being here, we we send the purchase order, we request, we re request the inventory, we get it, we get to check and say, hey, does this line up with what we requested? If so, then we make uh, the payment for it. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.